right, hi. So my name is Katie Jones, and um, I will be presenting today on the activity patterns of wolf spiders. Um, so my apologies if you're not a big fan of spiders, you're about to see a lot of pictures of them. Um, but yeah, so here we go. So a little bit of background, so why we focused on wolf spiders um, as our subjects of choice here. Um, spiders don't necessarily follow a 24-hour circadian rhythm in the way that um, a lot of humans and other animals do. Um, in the study I have cited here by Moore, um, they did find one type of spider only had a 13-hour um, cycle, or a 19-hour cycle. Um, so but that is why like, for, later, for later projects we wanted to run, we had to first figure out when exactly these spiders are active. Um, so to talk a little bit about previous activity tracking methods, um, before we ended up going with a different direction, but before um, the methods were that a spider would be placed in a test tube with different sensors and lasers that would measure the times that the spider crossed the laser as um, a metric of when they were active, um, we decided to go in a different direction because if a spider was being active on one side of the test tube and never crossed the laser, it would not be able to pick that up. Um, so just another thing that's worth noting, um, which I'll come back to later too, is that spider activity can also be altered when a spider feels threatened by um, like predator attacks or natural disasters like web destruction or flooding of their burrows. So um, when we went out and collected spiders in the field, um, it's just important to note that our presence may have stirred them from when they wouldn't have otherwise been active. Um, so the hypothesis for this experiment were that individual spiders do indeed have activity patterns and that those activities patterns will um, vary across species, sex, and time collected. Um, so a little bit about our methods. Um, a quick aside is that um, a lot of animals as well as spiders can be um, categorized as being um, nocturnal, diurnal, or crepuscular, so meaning that they're active during the day, night, or at the two different twilight times. So um, we collected 142 spiders across two temporal niches, some collected between 9 p.m. and midnight. Um, and then the following morning, we collected um, spiders from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, after the spiders were collected, we immediately fed them in the field. and. Um, then we took them back to lab where they were identified, masked, and photographed um, to later be measured and um, collect that data. Um, so what, what did we find? So these were just based off of some field observations before um, running them through the tracking software. So as you can see here, we found um, five different species of spiders, um, two being mostly found at night, one during the day, and then two found pretty equally during the day and the night. Um, just one thing to say here is, um, so we have, for some of the Schizocosa um, spiders, they um, visually look exactly the same and you have to look at them um, through dissection to determine the exact species. So that's why um, here I refer to some of them as just Schizocosa species and then same goes for the Pardosa um, spiders. Um, all right, so now that the spiders, we brought them back to the lab and ID'd and processed them. Um, they were placed in these um, petri dishes that were about 100 millimeters in length, and um, they underwent a 48-hour acclimation period. They were placed um, in a large walk -in, Darwin walk-in chamber, which we have in the lab, and set to a 14 to 8 light to dark cycle with two hours of twilight. Um, to, so we allowed for that acclimation period so they could get used to the lab settings and um, then we could figure out if their activity was truly because they were, that's the, those are the times that they are active and not just because they were anxious. Um, or as I said before, like spiders can get off their activity if they um, sense a predator. So also about the setup, they each, um, each spider got their own, like, own soaked cotton ball to provide a source of water over their acclimation period and tracking because once they were set in these, um, Petri dishes, they weren't given any food and they were just allowed to be tracked. Um, each Petri dish was placed on a piece of filter paper um, because we lined them up in a four by four grid so that um, the filter paper dampens any vibrations that they may feel of the other spiders walking nearby them so that hopefully they don't sense each other being active and then stir awake at different times. And then finally, each um, 
each um, uh, petri dish was wrapped in electrical tape to block the vision of the spiders, so they're unable to see each other and also then can just do their own thing. Um, so after the 48 hours of acclimation, we did 24 hours of recording. So for 24 hours, we recorded um, seven cameras of um, 16 by 16 grids, so 112 spiders, and they recorded every hour on the hour for 10 minutes. Um, and from after recording that for 24 hours, we um, or I ran the data through um, e EthoVision tracking software, where you're able to um, focus in on the spiders and define what each arena looks like, define what the spider looks like, and then the software tracks the movement and other different um, metrics of what's happening. You can do, I think, velocity um, as well. So um, now I'm gonna move into what we found. Um, so given the time restraints, because um, this was conducted relatively recently, I only was able to uh, um, analyze the data from one panel, and I. Um, analyze the data from four hour increments as opposed to all 24 hours and all 112 spiders. Hopefully moving forward in the fall, I will be able to take some more time to really get into the rest of the data, but this is a bit of our like preliminary findings. So um, the three different things we were looking at were the different niches that we found the spiders at, the different species, um, as I listed before, as well as the two different sexes. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, 16 different spiders broken up across um, all the different things, and this was just pa one panel of spiders. So here's what we found in terms of temporal niche, where the um, light, the orange color represents the spiders found during the day, and the blue represents the spiders found during the night. Um, as you can see here, it doesn't necessarily fit our predictions, where we thought that the spiders found during the day would be act more active during the day. Um, and the night spiders would be more active during the night, which could potentially be explained by the fact that our presence may have stirred certain nocturnal or diurnal spiders when we found them. Um, also, as you can see here, the metric we used for activity was the distance moved, which was measured in millimeters. Um, so that is what you're seeing along the y-axis. Um, the next comparison, so this is just the same data shown a little bit differently was by species, and here you can see that there is a bit more of a trend of certain species being active at different times of the day, or, or for example, the Pardosa here were active more consistently throughout the day. Um, so yeah, again, this is just the same data, but demonstrated with a little bit different. Um, and then the final comparison uh, we made was by sex, and here you can see a very clear distinction of the females being very active at night as opposed to the males, which are a little bit more consistently active throughout the day, and it varies a lot more by individual. Um, but yeah, especially in that 5, 5 a.m. Um, time period, the females really did pick up um, and began moving quite a bit. So just a quick summary of kind of what I just showed in the data was that um, the time collected does not ap appear to have a strong correlation with activity itself by our metric that we used. Um, however, activity does appear to vary across species. Um, given that this is only 16 individuals, that would be very, I'm very interested to continue looking into um, the activity across more panels where, where we have more um, individuals to analyze. And then also that um, females appear to be more active at night than males, which can have important repercussions for things um, such as mating habits as well as um, hunting for the females. So just a couple of quick considerations um, just to keep in mind after looking at the data. Um, so our proxy for activity was millimeters, which in itself is not necessarily a perfect, um, a perfect approximation. Um, sp wolf spiders are um, uh, ground hunters and they wait and um, ambush and they're ambush predators, so a spider may indeed be active, but be standing still because they're um, ambushing them, so that therefore that may not read as millimeters being moved. Um, as well as the tracking software is not perfect, and we are working through the issues with it, um, focusing solely on the spider. Um, and for a couple of the hours, I was having trouble getting it not to focus on the cotton ball, or if the spider was running around, it may switch its point of focus. Um, so that's another just thing that we're working through. And then also just consider this is only 16 of our 112 individuals that we tracked. So looking forward to learning a bit more. 
Um, so then, yeah, so why does it matter that <laughs> I analyze the activity patterns of spiders? So this can have, as I said before, impor important considerations for um, the mating habits of spiders, considering the females are more active at night. If a male wants to be successful finding a female, um, they may be more successful finding one at night as opposed to during the day. Um, it also has important considerations for respiration and foraging behavior. Um, for example, which Rachel will get into in her presentation, um, and a spider's respiration varies greatly depending on when it is active. So knowing exactly what times these spiders are active helps give us a better picture of um, when you would expect to see different respiration levels. And also at one of the overarching um, projects that's currently being conducted in the lab is about foraging behavior. So um, knowing when um, a spider is active can then also affect um, when they would be successful hunting. And given that spiders are so sensitive to light to um, set their circadian rhythms, it's an interesting to see when they should be set versus when we expose them to different lighting conditions, what actually happens. Um, so just a few acknowledgments and thank yous. Um, here is a quick picture of my poster. And um, does anyone have any questions? Actually, one of the later projects we did are conducting functional response trials about their um, hunting patterns in larger arenas. Um, the arenas we chose were 100 millimeters, so they were just enough so the spider could walk around and um, can move around and you know get settled, build a web, um, do other things. Um, I think it could be interesting to in, yeah to include um, a larger arena for some of, especially our larger specimens. Um, they were a little bit cramped in there. Um, kind of going off the last question, uh, could anything potentially change if you were to obtain captive produced specimens of the same species that could potentially be more comfortable in a captive environment? I do think that that could have um, an effect. I'm honestly not sure about pur purchasing, that would probably be a question for my advisor, purchasing um, wolf spiders, but um, we were looking, it would, uh, I would wonder how it would differ versus ones raised in the wild and ones raised during, in a lab setting. Because um, yeah, as I said, the, the, their circadian rhythms are very much dependent on the light that they're exposed to. So uh, I believe that um, having a lab raised one may in fact like, affect the time at which they're active. So did I understand it correctly that you said that they don't live on a 24-hour schedule, but on a 17-hour schedule? Um, one species of spider runs oh, on a 19-hour schedule, and so we were trying to figure out what schedules that these spiders run on. Oh, okay, so it's not per se that these spiders. Mm -hmm. There's a really wide variety um, among spiders. Some running on a 19-hour schedule, some can mm -hmm. run, I believe there's studies with an upwards of a 30-hour schedule. So there's just such a wide variety. We were interested about what our specimens specifically do. And if I can interject quickly, this is in a, a dark or completely bright environment. So it's not when there's no light change. Okay. So this is just their free running rhythm. So if you just lock them in a dark room, they'll have this natural activity pattern. And some, I think, I think there's one spider that goes on like nine hours. It's that fast. And then there's another spider that can go up for like 70 hours. But again, this is, I mean, it's very unnatural, right? It's, there's no light environment turning on. Turning okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard that if people are locked in in, uh, in darkness, that humans have, was it like longer or shorter time? So it depends on the person. But some can go as low as 22 and some can go as long as 27, which we thought was long until we started looking at spiders. Yeah. And this is, I mean, these are the record holders for like how how incredibly short or how incredibly long their uh, internal circadian rhythms can be. Hmm. And did you have a question? Uh, that was good. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can come to my house anytime to find spiders and oh, take them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did have another question. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know you guys collected mainly in the same area both um, times. Was there um, 
like I don't know enough about wolf spiders, but like if collecting from two different areas was there, uh, you know, potentially would have gotten a greater diversity in the types of wolf spiders, or were you guys wanting just more of the same types? Like, um, yeah. Yeah, we were honestly finding because thank you, Ben helped out with collecting with us at night, so shout out to him. But also, um, yeah, during the day we were finding some of the areas that were really abundant during at night definitely did not have nearly as many specimens during the day, so we had to even within our collecting site, go um, a lot of different locations. Um, so yeah, if you, you had chosen a completely different location, you would definitely find some different um, spiders. Uh, do you think the stress of relocation could impact the activity? Like, would you be able to control for that? Um, yeah, stress is one thing that we were definitely concerned about, which is why we had the paper dampening the vibrations, as well as that 48-hour acclimation period. So that allowed them to have, um, that's why we didn't track within the first, like immediately bringing into them into the lab. So like hopefully they can calm down and um, you know, they're well hydrated and can just adjust to being in a lab as opposed to being out in the wild. We don't have any online classes for the students. Um, so thank you.